Welcome to Network Marketing Pro. My name is Eric Worre, and today I'm here with Whitney Husband. Whitney. Hi. How are you? Good. How are you? I'm good. I'm Thank good. You I'm for good. Me. Whitney is uh, one of my dear friends. Um, I'm super proud of her, not because I can take credit for any of her success, <laughs> but because she has, as a single mom, gone out there in her 20s and built a very large organization, built it quickly, built it strong. She's a hard charger, hard worker. So congratulations. Thank I mean. you. Um, tell everybody, you know, give me the whole background. Um, when did you first get introduced to network marketing? I first was introduced whenever my son was five months old. Mm. So about almost four, a little over four years ago. A little over four years ago. And how old are you now? 28. 28. So you were 24 at the time? I think, or 25. I think so. 24, 24. 25. I'm having 23. Whatever. 24, 23, 24, 25, in that range. <laughs> yeah. Early 20s. <laughs> yes. Okay, cool. And uh, single mom, and uh, you must have lived in a big city. No. No. <laughs> I have grown up my whole life in a really small farm town. Mm -hmm. One red lot, about 2,000 people yeah. in the country in the middle of nowhere. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So 2,000 people, a little tiny town. Are you a cowgirl? Yes. I yeah. rodeoed my whole life. You rodeoed your whole life. What 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 events? Barrel racing and yeah. pole bending. Are you good? I was. Well, you were. Mm -hmm. It's over now. I stopped when I was eighteen. Oh, okay. By my whole life. My like, whole life have, ended at eighteen. Do you have like uh, trophies and yes. ribbons? Well, and... we actually won money. Really? Mm-hmm. Like how much? What was I your think, best year think, well, as ro in rodeo? For my four years of high school, I think it was. I think with with my scholarships, it was like a little over ten thousand. Ten thousand. So I used it all for over college. four years. My so you used it for college. Good saved for you. It. Mm -hmm. Very very nice. For me. So where, where where were you living? You had a five month old little boy. Mm -hmm. Where were you living uh, when you when you first got involved? I was living on my parents' land in a double wide trailer. Double wide trailer. Mm -hmm. So. On a dirt road, probably. It's blacktop, but yeah. Blacktop now? Pretty much. <laughs> yeah. But in the country. Very country. Country, country. Very. On the lake, in the boonies, in the sticks. Yeah. Very country. On a farm. Right. We don't talk about companies or products when we do these interviews, but who came to you and said, hey, you know, you should check out this, this thing? I actually saw... Um, someone that I had known previously on Facebook talking mm -hmm. about it, mm -hmm. and I just... Thought I had actually been looking to find a job of some sort because I had gone to school and when I had my son I had to start staying home. And I just couldn't find anything. So I was toggling with going back to school or getting a teaching, teaching certificate so I could go teach at the high school. Um, but I had also like looked at online surveys and just all kinds of stuff like that. And so I saw this, this company and I was like, well, I can use the products and maybe I could you know, sell to a few people. So I did that for about a year and a half. So a year and a half, you're, you're involved, and you, you just saw, found it online. Nobody contacted mm -hmm. you. Nobody put you on their prospect list. No. You just saw you were searching. Mm -hmm. and, and as a single mom, it's a little bit limited search, right? Because yes. what are you going to do with daycare, and what are you going to do? Yes. You know, a lot of, a lot of um, single parents get stuck in this trap. Yes. That if they get a job, then all the daycare eats up all the income from the job, mm -hmm. and it's, it's practically better off that they just stay at home. Yeah, that's exactly what, because my parents were such big supporters and for us and helping us, you know, basically survive. Um, we had government assistance, but they were taking care of the rest. And so my mom worked full time and had a really good job, and we did the math. And between me driving 30 minutes to town, and I mean, I wouldn't have government assistance anymore, mm -hmm. and then daycare and clothes for work, it was just to make $10, $12 an hour, it was never going to be worth it. Right. So I just, my mom and dad said, well, you stay home for a while and we'll just figure it out. So I did that company for about a year and a half and I actually ended up going back to school mm. to work on a second degree. Because that was going to be, the, maybe that'll take you to $14 an hour. Yeah, it was going to be about $4,500 a month. Yeah. Yes. Well, so that would take you, I don't know, $20 yeah. an hour or something. Mm -hmm. So I, we knew that would be enough to where we would not struggle, in, right. you know, anymore. And I had done that for about a year when I switched companies. Right. <laughs> right. And so, so you you just decided that instead of just using the product or whatever, you you were going to start to build an organization. Mm -hmm. My first year and a half, all I ever did was sell products. Mm -hmm. 
and which I could do. I think the salesman kind of runs in my family. My dad was a very well car salesman. My grandpa was the milkman. Yeah. I mean, it kind of runs in our family, and so I could sell products, and I knew how, to, and I knew how to give customer service. Mm-hmm. And when I switched companies, I started to realize, and watching from others, that if I would offer this other people and I would help other people, that I could actually build something. So you could search for people maybe like yourself, mm-hmm. people who are looking to build mm-hmm. something from home, people looking for something flexible. They could start with not much money, mm-hmm. all the benefits we talk That's about in network marketing, mm-hmm. right? And you got to go, huh. So you found this thing online, and you sold some product, and then you kind of found what you're doing in network marketing mm-hmm. and decided that you're going to grow a team. Mm-hmm. Not just sell products. You're still going to sell products. Yes. Because everybody's selling products. Yes. But you're going to grow a network as well, mm-hmm. and you're going to start to get some leverage in mm-hmm. your life. So talk about when you started doing that. Okay. What was uh, walk me through your first ninety days of doing that? So I was at that whenever I joined, I um, kind of went. That's when the Facebook really kind of started to really take off on um, social selling, and so while I was at school. I had my school notebook, and I would make a list of people, and I would go through my Facebook of who lived in different towns, you know, all around. I never, I never dreamed of going outside of my warm network mm-hmm. or outside of my state or anything like that. And so I would just, I made a list, and I would contact them, mm-hmm. and I would just ask them basically to look at what I had, you know, and um, and then offer it to their friends. Mm-hmm. Just basically just having a party. That's right. all I was doing. I wasn't trying to recruit them or anything. I was just trying to get my name out there is all I wanted to do. Right. So they would like host a, a party. A, a party and online. you would you would an online and you mm-hmm. did this on Facebook, mm-hmm. yeah? Yes, I never I never left my house. I did a few vendor shows, but other than that, I was in school and the only times that I didn't have Aiden was literally while I was at school. And I had him by myself, and so there was no way that... So talk to me about what a, what a party is on Facebook. So we just, um, we would find a person says, you know, I say, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll host a party on Facebook. Yes. What does that mean? So she would tell me yes. No, I'm, I'm, oh, okay. I'm just Okay, me. so you tell me yes, yeah. and so I would set it all up for you and give you the rundown of what we're going to do and what, you know, what's required of you to do. Mm-hmm. And then it's, and what is that? It would be you um, inviting your friends. Mm-hmm. You know, the more you tell your friends, the more that's going to help you right. for your benefit for the party. And So I, I, I would just invite pr- friends mm-hmm. to what? Uh, to the online party. So is, is it like a special page or something? Uh, you can do it. We used to do it in Facebook groups, and then now we do it at Facebook events. Facebook events. Mm-hmm. So you create a Facebook event. Mm-hmm. That's your online party. Mm-hmm. And, and you invite the, people mm-hmm. to it. It's your friends, and you can message, text, call. You can invite them. Mm-hmm. You know, you can send the link and say, you know, join. Um, How long does this party last? Uh, ten days. Ten days. So mm-hmm. it's a ten-day party mm-hmm. on Facebook. Mm-hmm. Ten days okay. was the max. I'm, I'm just... I'm, the reason why I'm asking these, you know, kind of more detailed questions about this, because I think people are fascinated. Yes, they are. With how social media is impacting the way that we're connecting yes. with customers and distributors, mm-hmm. right? So the fact you kind of cracked the code is the reason why I'm asking. So a person, you set up a, a Facebook event, mm-hmm. and it's Eric's uh, virtual party. Virtual party. That's like really old school, but yeah, but but come it to can be anything. Come to my party, online bash, or my online party, mm-hmm. Eric's online party. Um, come join me, mm-hmm. and I go invite all my friends. I say, you know, go find me on Facebook. Here's the link. You know, come and be part of this party. It's going to last for ten days, mm-hmm. and uh, your support would be amazing. And uh, come check it out. I think mm-hmm. it'll be a lot of fun. Yeah, and we would like together. We would post about it. So you know, if you have already tried the product or service, then you know, you can give your own testimony, which is best. Right. So I'd start bragging about the product. Yes. Hey, I tried this thing. Come yes. check out my party. And then as, you know, as the um, the host of it, I mm-hmm. would basically just be giving all the information. Um, but we also do fun stuff in it. We do games and ask questions and finding out. So people, is it just like a, it, inside that event, is it just a bunch of all people commenting inside uh-huh. there and mm-hmm. talking inside mm-hmm. there? And, and liking and. And, they and, can invite their friends, and they can invite their mm-hmm. friends. And is it is it inside that event? Are the products just 
easy available for sale there, or do they does it have to go through a process, or what? How's um, that work? So the hostess would actually have their own their own shopping link. Uh huh. So when the customer was ready to order, they would just go to the link, and they would be taken to the website, and they would be and they would order. They could just start ordering. Mm-hmm. So the only thing we would do would be promote it. Okay. And. So you promote it with this person. Yes. To say, hey, if you open up your influence, you know, I can help you make a few bucks mm-hmm. and have some fun, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. And your friends are going to like the products anyway. Yeah. It's going to be great. So come on in here, and I give you your special link. Now, does this person have to be a distributor yet? No. So, so, no, they're just a customer. So they're a customer, and mm-hmm. but they have a link, and what benefits do they get when people the, order? The party rewards. So they get rewards like prizes like, and stuff. Um, like free product and whatnot. Free, free product mm-hmm. and stuff. Got it. Um, so you start doing this. Yes. And what happens? It gets... The first 90 days. It gets huge. I was hosting tons of parties every month. And within that, what I realized was that I needed to meet these people. Mm-hmm. And so I started networking with my friends' people. And a lot of the, my recruits actually ended up coming from that, mm-hmm. especially the customers. Um, so I would become friends with them on Facebook mm-hmm. and doing my customer service and following up with them and, you know, building that relationship. And they were becoming customers and friends of mine that eventually most of them joined my team. Right. And so for 90 days, I did that. I was... Uh, in, in the first 90 days, how many people did you personally recruit approximately? Uh, 30 to 50. 30 to 50 It was people. more than 30, but it might have been... And, and, and from this tiny little town. Yes. Single mom. All online. You know, taking care of your, your son. Mm-hmm. All online. Mm-hmm. Right, and through the phone, I'm sure you're talking to people from time to time too. Right? A little bit, a little but mainly bit. Facebook. Going from zero dollars, hoping to get a zero. ten to twenty, ten to twelve dollar job, hoping to have daycare, mm-hmm. you know, going to school to get this second degree. How interesting was school at this point? I when I that that month was the, when I hit the top rank. It was when I I told my parents I was like, I'm sorry, I'm not a quitter, but I'm not going back to school in January. Right. <laughs> yeah, and I was actually really close to being done again. Mm. And I just, I couldn't put it together. There were already trips that I wanted to go on. I was seeing the benefits. I was being able to be with my son a lot Mm -hmm. more. And I was like, no, we're not going back to school. This is costing us too much money. So you're like like 25 at this point, mm -hmm. something like that. Mm -hmm. I think I was, yeah, I was 25 because at the time I was the youngest to hit hit that rank. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So you you grow this thing, you're doing this thing, and it's like, if it's working, let's keep doing it. Mm -hmm. So how many par- how many parties are you assisting hosting on a monthly basis? Anywhere from five to fifteen. Five to fifteen, mm-hmm. and then you're, you have some people on your team. You're teaching them to do the same yes, thing. Yes, always duplication. How many people on your team after you know ninety, hundred, twenty days that were you know working with you, running with you? Four um, hundred. Four hundred. And since we were so new, we were pretty solid. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Since it was such a new team, it was. We were pretty solid. Right. I don't know that there's really ever been. My dad told me, and that was one of the reasons he supported it, was because he had had someone years and years ago come into town and offer him an opportunity, one of the biggest companies ever. Yep. And he told them no, and that guy did go on to be a millionaire. But if, other than that, I don't know that that guy ever even stayed in the town. Mm-hmm. But I have, there hasn't ever really been anybody that has done it like this some people say well you know i don't have a support system i Mm -hmm. live in a small town and i have no support system Mm -hmm. so i can't build Uh, exactly and i had that you know i did had the no everyone thought i was crazy and even my parents were like no what are you doing you have to stay in school and you know i didn't care right what did i have to lose right i mean i was in my 20s and i saw the benefits i could see the bigger picture and that's all that really mattered to me you want to hear a scary thought sure what if somebody offered you the president of the bank before you were introduced to this? You'd be the president of the bank in your local town that pay you hundred thousand a year. I probably wouldn't. I probably wouldn't have taken it. I you wouldn't, wouldn't have. I don't know. When you're a single mom with a, with a five with a five month old, and, and, any... and your options were twelve twelve dollars an hour, and and you were living in a double wide. I probably would have really freaked out because I didn't grow my confidence until this. I understand, mm-hmm. but let, but let's say you know no for sure you can have it. Yeah. Oh. It would have just been a disaster, right? Because you might be, you know, being a big shot, making your hundred thousand, and stuck. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Just totally stuck. Mm-hmm. Because after this, what happens? You know, second year, talk about what happens. It doubled. It doubled. So this year, you finally bought a house. I did. So three months ago. Tell, tell me about the house. We looked and looked and looked, and I just 
I found one where I walked in and my, I was like, this is it. It was location, it's 50 acres, I have my farm, and it was... You got a, 50 acres, you got a farm. How, a, how big is the house? How many square 6, feet? 6,500 square feet. 6,500 square feet in Lufkin, mm -hmm. Texas. And it's beautiful. And it's beautiful. Mm -hmm. So what do people in the town say now <laughs> about the girl on the hill with the little boy? They... I heard that whenever I was actually buying it, they were like, oh, yeah, that rich blonde girl. The rich, you're the rich blonde girl now? <laughs> I was like, if that's what y'all want to call me. Are the cowboys coming around and saying, hey, you know, uh, looking for a date on Saturday night? I think people are more intimidated. Intimidated, mm -hmm. sure. Yeah, but that's okay. It is. Yeah, they'll learn to live with it mm -hmm. or not. Or not, pretty yeah. much. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So 50 acres, you get the dream. 50 acres, you, you, you're, you got your farm, you got this big, beautiful house, you probably can't even use the whole thing because, you know, the two of you in this, in mm -hmm. this sprawling mansion mm -hmm. in Lufkin. We um, are basically living in the downstairs. You're living in the downstairs, mm -hmm. you don't even need the upstairs I'm yet. turning a huge quarter upstairs into my office. Okay. Two big bedrooms into my office together. Yeah, mm -hmm. and this is still all built from your phone? Everything. So, first of all, I'll just tell you, uh, congratulations you. on what you've done. Um, for those watching this, this is not normal. This is not, it doesn't happen every day. Um, you shouldn't expect this to happen unless you expect this to happen. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. uh, what we like to say inside of this profession is not everyone's going to go to the top. Mm -hmm. Not everybody's going to be a million dollar earner, but anyone can. Anyone can. And your example... Um, highlights the fact mm -hmm. that you've eliminated a lot of excuses for people. I'm a single mom. I, you know, how, how do you expect me to do it? Mm -hmm. I live in a small town. How do you expect me to do it? I don't have this extra degree. How do you expect me to do it? You know, how do I deal with daycare? How do you expect me to do it? You know? mm -hmm. All of these excuses that are, that are just that. What caused you to keep driving when other people would have stopped? Uh, number one was for my son, of course. Mm -hmm. I, I will never forget the situation that we were in, even though I wasn't even raised like that. But that's what I had gotten us into. What was it? Tell me about Just it. Just poverty. I mean, you know, we didn't live on the streets, but, I mean, we would have if there wouldn't have been my parents supporting. And so to, know, you know, to have absolutely no money... And I couldn't get him anything. And at that age, he doesn't, he would have known. But at the age he is now, you know, I would hate to be able to tell him, no, you, you can't ever have those things. And so that was number one, was I didn't ever want to go back to where we were. And uh, number two was I wanted to be successful. Hmm. I, I had passion. I, I knew that I, I wanted to do something big. When I was in college, I thought I was going to move to the city and go work in corporate America. Cause, and I wanted to climb a ladder, you know? I was okay with that. And so I always want to be successful. And so that was one of the other big things for me. Um, for a while, you have that, that fighter mode where everyone tells you you can't do it. That pushed me for a long time. Mm -hmm. And then it's kind of shifted again into a, 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 into a place to where helping others and seeing what, how other people's lives, you know, can and have been changed. And especially when, you know, those lives are your friends. Right. And so that has just, that's, at this point, is the biggest motivator for me. There's, there's two sides of the friends thing, right? Mm -hmm. One side is when you, a friend gets involved and has success, mm -hmm. and it's super fun. Mm -hmm. and the other side is when a friend gets involved and decides not to do it. Mm -hmm. and it's like super bum. I, and I, and I've, done, I've been through both. Of course. I, I literally have had my best friends have signed up and not done anything, but end up being product users. And a lot of them did sign up because they saw what I was doing, but I... I've never let that bother me, mm -hmm. and I've always told them I support you in, in either way. If you want to do what I've done, let's do it. Right. And I have a friend from college that that's what she wanted to do. She told me when she joined, she wanted to make $500, and that was it. And then she has that hustle mode, too, and she was like, mm-mm, I'm going to the top. Let's go. And we've done it together ever since. So I mean, I've, had, I've experienced both, and nice. both have been great, and I've, really, I've never felt like I was let down or anything or like that, I just, I like to, and the, other, and the other side of your friends are the ones you meet, mm -hmm. you know, in the business, and then end up becoming your friends, Right. and that's, the, the relationships, the camaraderie, mm -hmm. the, 
That's you know, the special too. Are great. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So talk to me about give me three lessons that you've learned over the course of this experience as you've grown your business. You I, know, thing, things that have made a major difference for you. I think my one of my biggest lessons early on was I was dragging people and wanting it for them when they didn't want it for themselves. Mm-hmm. And so when I realized that that was not the way to go, um, that I could inspire them and motivate them, you know, to want better, but at the end of the day, it was their decision. And so that was huge for me. And I still see that almost everybody in the industry, they just want it for other people more than they want it for themselves. Fall in love with their potential. Yeah, and so you you push them. And sometimes if you push people like that, you push them away. Mm -hmm. Whereas you could take a step back and just try to inspire and motivate them the best way that you possibly can mm-hmm. with your own successes and you know sharing stories of others. And so really getting them to motivate themselves and want it for themselves. Yep. So I learned that after about a year and a half. So yep. it made a huge difference. Um, another one was to not listen to what anybody else says. You know, you, you are your own decision maker and Mm. you get to decide your success or your failure so I figured that out and then I think the other would be um, more like learning how to share why you're doing what you're doing you know not just what you're doing Mm -hmm. Um, I learned that that attracts people and that interests people give me an example you know, and early was, you know, I'm, you know, I'm doing this because of what has happened. You know, what's happened to me, um, how it's happened to other people, and I don't, you know, I don't want that anymore. And now it's more of, I do this because I want others to have success, and I want others, you know, to have confidence. And, and, I, and I'm really big on, on women power, mm-hmm. which you are too. And there's been a shift. Mm. There was old days where women did not do anything. They didn't have a role. And then there was the the age and the era where they did. My mom, for example, has always had a very powerful job. And then it shifted again to my generation to where it's like, you work? You, don't shouldn't you be taking care of the kids? Mm. And so it's now it's we can have both. Mm-hmm. We can be successful. We can have powerful jobs or whatever it is, and we can have a family and still balance all of that together. So what I'd like you to do, just for, you know, for perspective, mm-hmm. think about the worst day you had in the last three years, business-wise. The worst circumstance, the worst experience, it was a down day. Mm-hmm. And you know, describe that to me, number one, and then what did you do about it? I think it was... I had someone in my business that was family, and her circumstances were very similar to mine. And she was actually, had a very large team, and she was, it's not something that she would have had normally. Mm -hmm. And um, we had really worked really hard for her to have that, and she gave it up and walked away Mm. and went somewhere else. Mm. And it was, I just, because she was my family, first of all. And just because I, she walked away from something huge and then it left a mess, Mm. you know, within the organization, a huge mess. And that was hard. Mm. It was really, really hard. And I had to pick it up and I had to pick the pieces up and, you know, I said my piece and wished, you know, them well. And then I went in and started picking up the pieces. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So how long did you allow that to uh, emotionally affect you? If you had to, like, measure the time. A couple of weeks, maybe? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So it was a couple-week deal, mm-hmm. you know? And, like, today, if you had the same situation happen, it probably won't be as long, will it? It's just a day or two. It's a day or two it's- now because you got stronger. Mm-hmm. So it, it served you in the mm-hmm. long run, you know? And if it happens again, and it will, mm-hmm. you know, three, three years from now, it might be a couple hours, mm-hmm. right? And I, and I think I've seen from the experience of what, what she walked away from, it's a million-dollar leg, and it's an international leg, mm. a huge international leg. Oh, so sad. And so I've, I've seen that you know, everything works out. Mm-hmm. And to go in and do the right thing and pick up the pieces and yep. work with the ones 
yep. that are there. And um, now I, it's a much, much quicker process to get over. Right. Mm -hmm. What's next for you? I don't know yet. I have, sometimes I just sit there and think, I can't believe I have achieved this in such a short time. Yeah. But what I feel in me is that there's so much more I can do. There's so much more change that I can make. Um, a lot of that impacting people's lives and women's lives and getting them to believe in themselves that mm -hmm. they can be powerful. Um, the more of that, the better off. Yeah. So it's starting to shift, not, not as much about the money now as no. about the impact. Mm -hmm. You know, the contribution mm -hmm. you're making to other people's lives. It's, it's addicting, isn't it? Yes. When you, when you feel like you're starting to help people. Yes. Because the cool thing is you can pretty much be done working for money by the time you're 30. Mm -hmm. um, and then spend the rest of the time working for legacy, for purpose, mm -hmm. for growth, for contribution, um, you know, to be a you know, difference maker in the world, even mm -hmm. if it's just one person or whatever it happens to be. Right. In your case, it's a lot of people. Right. Um, so that's really cool. Uh, here's what I'd like you to do. I'd like you to look into that camera right there. And you know this audience. This mm -hmm. is, you know, the Network Marketing Pro audience. They want success. They want what you have. They want, they want to get past their limiting beliefs. They want to break through their fears. They want, to, they want to build a big business. And sometimes they doubt themselves. Sometimes they're not sure. Uh, what I'd like you to do is just look at them and just you have a conversation with them one-on-one. -on -one and offer them some advice, whatever that advice would be um, from your heart to theirs. Hi. <laughs> First of all, it is to believe in yourself. And sometimes that takes time. Whatever you have to do, write it down, read it to yourself every single day. But to believe that you can have the change, the impact, whatever it is that you are desiring, it's not what anybody else says. You have the control over that. Another part is for me is just helping other people. The more people that you can reach out to and help and build them up and teach them the things that you know, and you also being open-minded and receiving and learning from them, your business, your team, it will grow tremendously, more than you can ever imagine. Um, and always keeping that first, not trying to do this for your own, you know, your own personal gain. But when you put that into other people's lives and you are going to help them change theirs, it's inevitable that yours will completely change for the better. Got it? Mm -hmm. Awesome. Well, thank you for your contribution. Congratulations on your success. And I know this is just the beginning, so I'm looking forward to updates. Me too. Um, as this continues to grow, it continues to expand. You continue to grow and expand. You continue to help other people. Uh, congratulations on that. And ladies and gentlemen, I hope you got some good lessons from this, some good ideas, some good insights, maybe a little bit more conviction as to uh, what your limiting beliefs might be, that those are an illusion, mm -hmm. that no matter your circumstance, you can break through. And you can utilize the profession of network marketing to be able to build a life of your dreams. Okay? So, from Whitney and myself, our wish for you is that you decide to become a network marketing professional. That you decide to go pro. Because it is a stone cold fact that we do have a better way. Yes, we do. Now let's go tell the world. Everybody, have an amazing day. Have an amazing week. And we'll see you next time. Take care. Bye-bye. Hey. My name is Eric Worre, and if you're involved in the network marketing profession, I want to invite you to come to the Network Marketing Pro YouTube channel. Every week, we put out content on how you can become a network marketing professional. We have tips, ideas, strategies, interviews with million-dollar earners in the profession, interviews with global icons like Tony Robbins or Sir Richard Branson, lots of different things that we provide there absolutely free. Do yourself a favor, click on the link, subscribe to the YouTube channel, tell your friends to do the same, and I can't wait to see you there.